Tim LaRue, TheFreshAir.com here with Logic outside Hard Rock Cafe. Boston, man, you just killed it in there. I had a blast, man. It was dope. Uh, what about performances in general? You know, you, you so much energy on stage. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know, man. I've, I've been practicing forever, and I quit smoking, and that really, like, yeah. gave me a lot of extra energy to breathe and everything on stage. And just giving it my all has seemed to... I, I give back what the crowd gives me so the more energy they give me the more energy yeah. i give them and we just go crazy and have a really good time so yeah. it's dope how about after the show you stayed after for like 45 minutes talking to every fan taking pictures how can you do that um i do that because one day i'm not going to be able to do that so i want to take that time so that the fans know so that later can't nobody say shit like everybody knows i love my fans and i did it to the last like breath of me that i i, I gave my all to them and i love them the rat pack the bobby Soxers, yeah. man you know what it is that's what I wanted to ask about the Rat Pack, the Bobby Soxers, your whole Sinatra movement. How did that come about in the first place? Um, I don't know, just Sinatra. He's suave. He's debonair. He's like, you know, he's got swag and he's honorable, respectable. He's, he's got valor and grace. I don't know. It's just real fun. And the whole the Rat Pack is spelled with two T's, which stands for real all the time. Yeah. Just like uh, Frank Sinatra's Rat Pack, yeah. which, which was R-A-T. And then the Bobby Soxers are my female fans. Uh, and Frank Sinatra's female fans back in the day were called Bobby Soxer. So I'm kind of taking that entity on as the young Sinatra. So you've kind of had a little buzz for a while, but it's really kind of vamped up since young Sinatra. So what's life been like since then? That changed a lot for me. Um, it changed a lot uh, in my life and in just everything. <laughs> They're bumping the shit right now. Hey, <laughs> yeah. They're really bumping that shit right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was the question? Look, they got me fucked up. What was the question? Oh, it was just about what life's been like since Young Sinatra. Oh, it's been it's been like that. Yeah. It's been like motherfuckers driving down the street, bumping my stuff. Um, it's been amazing. But things have really, really, really vamped up since I've started put uh, started to put out these uh, singles for Undeniable, for Young yeah. Sinatra Undeniable, the new mixtape that's about to drop. And I mean, since then, since those singles, um, it's just been like crazy. It's been yeah. crazy. At least to me. It what's made you so successful in this like last few months is a combination of not just the quality of music but it's also the little things like realizing you're this kind of real down-to-earth person that wants to communicate with fans so is that something you 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 know consider on a day-to-day -day basis reaching out doing that kind of, of stuff? course it's yeah. a big deal you know um, uh, in no way is it uh, synthetic or fat like it's it's all real yeah. I really do care about my fans and like that shit is no joke. Like, yo, I have thousands and thousands course, and yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands of fans. I can't get to every single one. I do my best and I love you all, but it's like, yo, if I don't hit you back, my bad. Uh, there wasn't Twitter in 96 with Jay-Z <laughs> and Big L and like all these people. So you have Twitter now. So the fact you can even see my thoughts is a big deal. And the fact I spend so much time tweeting out my thoughts and positivity is a big deal. So please enjoy that. But it's like, overall, I make music just for you. So if you could just enjoy that and just keep rocking and keep repping the Rat Pack and keep being a Bobby Soxer, like... That's what I'll appreciate because I sacrifice hours and hours and hours giving back to the fans. I mean, I write, record, mix, master, engineer, produce. All I do is music and all I do, I, I do it for you and you, like yeah. the fan. Um, talk a little bit about your team. You, you've been putting out these dope ass videos and you know, you got the whole visionary group behind you. So talk about what your team means to you. My team is my heart. My team is my everything, you know? It, uh, they're the people that have been there since day one, the people that have supported me. I, I keep my circle very small. You know, I plan to eat with the same per people that I starved with. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna let any any new guys, you know, come on in. And everything that we're doing is incredible, and, and, and I'm I'm blessed, man. I love my team. They're, they're why I'm here, you know? Yeah. You talk about Big L a lot, I've heard. Yeah. Um, who are some of the other inspirations? I mean, Big L, Nas, Tribe Called Quest, uh, the Roots, Black Thought, um, Jay Z, Drake, um, you know what I'm saying? Kanye, Common. I mean, the list goes on and on. Wu Tang, Wu Tang Clan, of course. Um, uh, Nirvana, Radiohead, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, John Coltrane. Um, shit. I mean, it's just there's so many. Like I'm not, I'm not in just in a box. Like yeah. I make music for lovers of all music, and anybody who doesn't respect the fact that I like to make music for everybody I don't get it because it's like this uh, somebody could say logic why are you making mainstream music uh, you should keep making raw music well there's people out there who hate the mainstream but then there's people out there who love the mainstream and kind of hate that raw shit so it's like I create music for you 
and I create music for them in the hopes that I can open both of your minds and you'll just love my music in general. One thing I found really interesting when I first again started getting into your music was I, I heard, I think it was in an interview, you were talking about you know, you didn't buy your first pair of Jordans until you were like 20 or something like that. 22, and 22. it's these Jordans that I'm wearing right now. Yeah, I bought I Jordans in Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. I love it. Chicago's a very beautiful city. I was born um, there. Really? Yeah, I haven't been there since. I need to Swag. go back. Word. Um, I, when I went to Chicago, I went to Reggie's, and I, we sold out there, uh, which was incredible. And um, I've been broke my whole life. I've been poor my whole life, man. And I've worked, and I've worked, and I've worked, and I've sacrificed so much to... For, for music and it's not for me it's for the listener yeah. I've sacrificed my whole life so that I could hopefully help other people and and I'm just now kind of starting to reap the benefits you know I, I got some nice money in my pocket and, yeah. and I'm okay and I'm I'm happy and I'm making a living off music and I'm being smart I'm not blowing all my money and and it's like the fact that these are my first pair of Jordans that I ever bought and it took me to be 22 years yeah. old to do that it means a lot and I, I fucking I love these things and they're just material you know what I mean yeah. but uh, you're not defined by the material you possess or the amount of money that is in your bank account. What defines you is how you obtain them. Yeah. And how I attain them is by doing my best to be a good man. Yeah. And um, and I'm real happy. All right. So the last question, uh, just what can people look out for in the future? What are you working on? Of course, Young Sinatra Undeniable is the next mixtape. Um, it's going to have 23 tracks on it. Michael Jordan. One feature, my homie Castro. That's it. But one thing that I want to say, and I want you guys to keep this shit. This is very, very serious. All right, look. Visionary Music Group is independent. We are independent. But there's so many people out there who are like, oh, yeah, fuck major record labels and da-da-da-da-da. I'm going to tell you something. I have turned down multi-million dollar deals because the print, the fine print was like, Logic can't have creative control. <laughs> uh, we're going to tell you what to create. We're going to tell you who to work with. We're going to pick your singles. We're going to this. We're going to that. We're going to give you a whole bunch of money, but you can't do shit. And you know what I told them? I said, fuck you. So it's like, they said it wouldn't work. I told them, go fuck themselves. I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this for the right deal. So listen, I just want to say this to everybody out there. Visionary Music Group is like the new school Rockefeller. I feel there was the golden era of hip hop, and now we're in the second renaissance. And I'm one of the leaders of that, and I'm proud to say it humbly with, with you know, my peers. And uh, Visionary Music Group is like, this, is like Rockefeller. Dame Dash, that's like... Chris Aru, Visionary Music Group. I like to see myself as a J. In yeah. no way am I arrogant or cocky. I have to see it in order to do it. Yeah. And um, they did it independent. And when they signed with a with a major, they did it the way that they wanted to do it. And I promise all my fans out there, yeah, we will sign one day. And you know the. The pennies will be pretty, but the the fine print, I'm going to make the type of music that I'm going to make, and they're not going to say shit. A million deals have come my way, and I've turned them all down, and I'm waiting for the right one. So when I do sign it, rejoice. I love y'all. Visionary Music Group for life. You already know what it is. Uh, the fresh air all day, all day. Follow me on Twitter at Logic301. It's L-O-G-I-C-301. Go to mindoflogic.com. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Oh, man, thank you. Honestly, it was an honor. It was great seeing you perform Dude, tonight. No, it was an honor to be with you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, so many people think that rappers, they call us stop a deceased. Got a capiche? This is my house, you fuckers just lease. Waiting on a record, yeah, that's never coming like a priest. Black and white like a nun, he's up and come as our son. Like the break of dawn, so follow your father. Like an apostle, paint pictures like a Picasso. While bitches uncover my fossil. Never know when what's gonna follow, however, we never waddle. And I sorrow, just pray for tomorrow. Rat pack all day, swag.